Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's CJ from We Haven't Done This In So Long. Hey. Yo! Uh, I thought I would do a 2022 new releases that I'm hyped for video. I just saw the Lit Hub most anticipated books of 2022 list and there's no need to reinvent the wheel, okay? They already rounded up all of the books I'm pretty much looking forward to. Hey, you pretzel eater. Can you, get, can you get farther away from me? Okay, first up we have Vladimir by Julia May Jones out February 1st by Avid Reader Press. I know Jalen from the Barnum Bookcase has already read this. The blurb says, this debut novel is compulsively readable, deliciously wicked, and extremely fun. Uh, it contains obsession, sex, academics, literary ambition, and a sharp edge narrative voice that you can't quit that you can't quite pin down. Plot summary is a professor becomes infatuated with a new hire while her husband faces a termination hearing for sleeping with his students. So social climates at universities, scandal, but have like, you know, the gender flip there. Sounds good to me. Kiki, do you want me to shut the door? You're done now? <laughs> okay. I'm my desk. <laughs> Is there nowhere else you could have been? I need my computer. Okay. I'm gonna be typing on it all out. I just need my <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, take your laptop. I just need about ten minutes. Gosh. Try not to eat any pretzels. Or type too loud. I'm filming. I have today off and Kiki doesn't. Next up we have Night Shift by Kira Ladner out by Custom House. I think that's an indie press. This is a debut novel. It focuses on female friendship, an obsessive female friendship that kind of gets unhealthy with two characters named Sabine and Meggie. Uh, when Sabine trades in her hours for the night shift, so too does Meggie, and they begin living their nocturnal life together, exchanging the plain ease of daytime and boyfriend's normalcy for the mystery and liminality of the night and all its shrouds and reveals. <gasps> Love, giving me Sisters by Daisy Johnson vibes, um, maybe even Eileen energy with that female friendship there. That sounds good. <laughs> Did we just get a package? Yeah. Is the package at least for me? No. Nope. Ah! It was for me, and it was a good package. But shut up, please. <laughs> Next up, we have New Animal Elf by Ella Baxter, uh, put out by $2 Radio, which is one of my favorite indie presses. They put out The Deeper the Water, The Uglier the Fish, which is one of my favorite books of all time. This is described as a raw, arresting novel, which follows a cosmetic mortician as she goes into a, a tailspin after the death of her mother. Included in the tailspin are a trip to Tasmania, an uncertain communion with her birth father, dating apps, a BDSM club, kink-related paperwork, a horse head, painting a man's face with menstrual blood, and mean text. This sounds like a romp. It sounds like a woman unraveling, a woman on the er a verge, and I'm very down. And then we have Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Melors. It follows a 24-year-old painter with an expiring student visa, and Frank is 20 years older and financially stable. Their impulsive marriage sets off a reaction in their circle of friends and family. This sounds good, rompy, kind of gossipy. Uh, almost reminds me of, what's that book I read recently? Acts of Service by Lillian Fishman, which I think is also on this list a little bit later on. I'm into it. Okay, now we have a little non-fic collection of essays, I believe. It's called The Believer, Encounters with the Beginning, the End, and Our Place in the Middle by Sarah Krasnostein, uh, out by Tin House. It's a fascinating portrait of the human condition that explores a range of belief systems through six profiles of a death doula, a geologist, a ghost hunting neurologist, UFOologist, a woman accused of murder, and a Mennonite family living in New York. Uh, sounds like a sociological profile of all of those different tiny, tiny niche communities, and I'm into that. Okay, then we have, <laughs> Kiki, how do I say this word? The DeLorean? DeLorean. Is that how I say that word? The Deloriad by Missouri Williams, which is up by FSG. 
I already have read this book. It's coming in March. It is incredibly disturbing. It follows an ancestral family that is set post-apocalypse as they try to rebuild the world within their own incestuous community and pulls like a lot from Greek tragedy and myth and is truly one of the most singular, hateful, weird books I've ever read. If you liked Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor and can handle that level of intense, hateful writing at times, I would say try this out. It is definitely a singular reading experience. Okay, and then we have Aurelia Aurelia by Katherine Davis out by Grey Wolf, who's another really good publisher I like. It is a memoir. It's place-based with hints of magical realism. It is about being a teenager, trying on identities, being late in middle age, um, and the memoir center is the death of her husband and reflects on the life they lived together. Sounds sad, engaging, interesting. I'm into it. We have Love by Mayan Eaton out by Penguin Press in March. This follows Libby, a young sex worker looking for love. Uh, it's written in fragments. Libby is testing out different narratives about her life and I guess it was a big literary sensation in Israel so that sounds exciting. It sounds interesting but I need to know more. Vagabonds, a novel by Logosha Asuende out by Riverhead in March. Uh, it catalogs the lives of an ensemble cast of vagabonds for whom life itself is a form of resistance. Could be potentially really intriguing. You know I have those carny ties. We love, we love a rambling man. Could potentially be cool. Okay, next is Monarch by Candace Wool, out by Soft School in March, one of my favorite publishers. Uh, this is a debut novel which merges iconic true crime stories of the 90s with theories of human consciousness, folklore, and a perennial cultural fixation with dead girls. I love Soft School. They only publish the weirdest, coolest stuff. I love this cover. It's giving me exquisite Mariposa energy and I think it's gonna be a really good read. Now we have True Biz by Sarah Novick out by Random House in April. It is a second novel and it's a coming of age story set in the River Valley School for the Deaf where students Austin, Charlie, and Coda, which means child of deaf adult headmistress February learn to navigate their place in the world. Uh, already has a television adaption option, which is cool. And I think sets sign language and disability rights all in the context of a first love coming of age memoir, which sounds cool. Okay, Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel out by Knopf in April. This is the writer of Station Eleven whose book just got adapted into an HBO miniseries, which was really powerful and stunning and reminded me how good that book was. It was pretty different than the book, but you know, the grounding of that was there. This is another dystopian book about art and family and time travel. I'm into it. Okay, now we have The Unwritten Book, an investigation by Samantha Hunt out by FSG in April. It is a work of nonfiction, a collection of essays about the discovery of her father's unfinished manuscript, uh, part literary criticism, part memoir, and part family history. That sounds really incredible. Samantha Hunt did a collection of short stories, I believe, that I've read previously. What have I read by her? The Dark Dark, which I think is a, was it a novella or a collection of short stories? Short story collection. Yeah, not for everyone, but definitely has a certain tone of dark weirdness. Okay, Acts of Service by Lillian Fishman out by Hogarth in May. I have read a arc of this already on NetGalley for fans of Sally Rooney, Otessa Moshbeg, Joan Didion. Raven Lee Lonnie has blurbed it along with Sheila Hetty. It's about a messy love triangle between a queer woman and has a lot of strange, sexy power dynamics in it and it's definitely gonna be buzzy. If you like any Rooney, um, Exciting Times, Nisha Dolan, very messy, love configuration this will be a book for you a year of the horses a memoir by courtney mom out by tin house in may this is a memoir about horses <laughs> um and also the author's experience with depression and historical portraits of other horseback riding ladies i rode horses growing up i don't know if you know that about me but i do love horses 
and this sounds great. <laughs> Either or by Elif Batuman out by Penguin in May. This is the sequel to The Idiot by Elif Batuman. It's a literary novel following our protagonist, Selin, who is now a sophomore at Harvard, and I'm excited to see where her sad summer romance has gone. Lots of people are excited for this, and I am no exception. Happy Go Lucky by David Sedaris. A new David Sedaris collection out and made by Little Brown. Say no more, I'm all over it. I think this will be mostly focused on the final days he spent with his dad. So there'll be some funny and sad all mixed together. Classic Sedaris. Cult Classic by Sloane Crosley out by MCD in June. Uh, this is a novel which is billed as a surrealist meditation on love in an age when the past is ever at your fingertips and sanity is for sale. Sounds very online, giving me fake accounts, love the cover, can't wait. The Novelist by Jordan Castro out by Soft Skull in June. Jordan Castro, this is a debut novel, um, and it follows the novelist over a single morning as he struggles to write an autobiographical novel based on his own heroin addiction and recovery. This sounds kind of like tongue-in-cheek, self-aware, writing about writers who are writing. I'm into it. Thrust by Lydia Yunkovich, out by Riverhead in June. This tells the story of a motherless girl growing up amid the chaos of climate change and growing police state who, after learning that she has the power to travel through time, harnesses the skill to rescue folks in the past. That sounds great. This is a bizarre cover that reminds me of the Pisces. A little magical realism in all the right ways. Sounds fun. Thank you for the pretzel. The Great Man Theory by Teddy Wayne, out by Bloomsbury in July. This is the author of Apartment, which I still haven't gotten around to. Uh, but this explores the idea of masculinity in America and follows Paul, who is the main character, he spends his day lecturing his young daughter about the authoritarian creeps running the country, believing himself to be the only person who can truly understand the current political climate. So this kind of sounds like working with 40 year old men who use terms like emotional awareness you know i think this will be a really interesting take on new age masculinity and what it means when men try to connect with women death by landscape essays by elvia wilk out by soft school i have a couple elvia wilk books well i have oval right there a previous novel of hers that i want to read eventually uh, this explores the erotics of compost, vampires, medieval nuns, and solar punk. It also examines the work of Ann Carson, Octavia Butler, and probes the lines and shapes of weird fiction in the face of extinction and all its urgencies and anxieties. And anxieties. We have Lapvona by Otessa Moshvag, out by Penguin in June. I think this is a medieval set novel which explores fiefdom and natural disasters and is the story of a motherless shepherd boy and his bond with a mysterious and mystical village midwife. Sounds incredibly weird but we're gonna do it for Otessa, right? We gotta do it. Be Here to Love Me at the End of the World by Sasha Fletcher out by Melville House in February. This is a debut novel by a poet and it's a love story about a freelancer in Brooklyn in winter with a strange president. Sound familiar? Um, blurbs by Alexander Kleeman, this book roils with beauty, with enthusiasm, for love for both the minuscule and oversized wonders of the world. Good blurb, I'm in. Okay, that's it. Those are my 2022 books that I'm looking forward to based off one Lit Hub list. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff in this list though. I think it's gonna be an excellent year for books. I'm actually really excited. Uh, always trying to split the balance of being a new release girl and a backlist girl. But with so much good stuff coming up, like I can't not read those things. You know what I mean? Let me know what you're looking forward to reading. I would love to know if anything on this list caught your eye. I think I need to get some pre-orders in. I need to be better about pre-ordering. Um, I'm probably most excited for the David Sedaris book. Because I am who I am. Okay, cool. Hope this was fun. Love you guys. Bye.